we sing. He's the reason why we do a whole lot of things. Amen. That we wouldn't probably normally do. Talk about Christ Jesus. Almighty God. The reason why we sing.
to capitalize. Uh, it's just a bad weekend for church because everybody wants to travel. Mm -hmm. See, Labor Day is different things to different people, amen? Amen. Uh, to the factory or the office worker, it may be a day off. For policemen who deal with extra traffic, dragon con, or alcohol or substance abuse, it, it could be a tough day. Mm -hmm. To farmers and ranchers, it's just another day to feed the cattle, just another day to work in the fields. For preachers, it's just an opportunity to talk about work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that opportunity today. Because work is very important for the people of God. Amen. 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 I have a true story I want to share with you on today. Any Navy people in the house? There's one. Amen. We're going to glorify the Navy today. Amen. Amen. They're worthy. They're worthy. All the good movies <laughs> are Navy movies. Amen. Huh? Top Gun. NCIS. Amen. Amen. Hunt for Red October. Amen. Crimson Tide. Emo Jima. Yeah, all the good military movies are Navy movies. It's just something about the Navy. Amen. The USS Astoria was the first U.S. cruiser ship to engage the Japanese during the Battle of Savo Island in World War II. It was a night action fought August 8th and 9th in 1942, although the Astoria scored two hits on the Imperial flagship Chikai, she was badly damaged and sank shortly after noon on August the 9th. About two o'clock that morning, a young Midwesterner, a signalman by the name of Elgin Staples, I don't know if he's related to the store, Staples, but signalman third class Elgin Staples was swept overboard by the blast when the Astorias Number one, eight-inch gun turret exploded. This is a true story. He was wounded in both legs by shrapnel, and in semi-shock, Staples was kept afloat by a narrow life belt that he managed to activate with a simple trigger mechanism. Amen. Amen. More on that story later. Point number one, God has always honored and provided work. Amen. 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 That's a good place to say amen. amen. Point number one, God has always honored and provided work. We see in Genesis 2, 2, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. God himself is a worker. Yes, he is. Huh? And he appreciates rest. Yes. Raise your hand if you can appreciate rest. Amen. amen. I thought I would do some amens right there. <laughs> he created us in his image and he gave us work to do. Amen. Genesis 2 and 15, we see. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. See, even from the beginning, God gave men work to do. Huh? Even in the garden of Eden, there was work to be done. When Jesus came to earth, God honored work. He said to the shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Go and see this child. Mm -hmm. Huh? 
He honored work by sending the word of the Christ child to the working man. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 2 and 8, we see where it says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. They were working when they got the word about Jesus. God honors work, and he provides work. Amen. If you want a job, come to Love Christian Center, because we got some praying folk around here. Everybody that has come here seeking a job, we have prayed about a job, and a job was provided for them. Amen. Amen. That's just fact. Amen. You want a job, come here. We'll get you one. Amen. Uh, Jesus learned his trade as a carpenter. And if you've ever tried to build anything, you know that that is work. Huh? I mean, you can try building something simple. Uh, something that you would think would be simple. Report back to me and let me know just how simple it was. Mark 6 and 3, we find these words. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, uh, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Jesus was a carpenter. He worked with his hands in his daddy's carpentry shop. Uh, Jesus chose working men to be his disciples. Huh? Peter, Andrew, James, and John were fishermen. Huh? And if you've ever been a commercial fisherman, huh? Anybody watch that show, The Deadliest Catch? Ooh, I wouldn't have that job. No, uh -uh. folk die out there. Matthew was also a tax collector. The Bible doesn't tell us what Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Thaddeus, James, or Judas did for a living, but you can guarantee that they had a job of some type. I think it's safe to say that uh, they were working men. Jesus called them from their labors to become fishers of men. Amen. He called them to be disciples. He called them to be evangelists. He called them to be preachers and pastors. That's work. Amen. Amen. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 10 and 7 and remain in the same house eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. What was Jesus saying to them? I'm glad you asked. He said he didn't want them going from house to house begging, but Jesus expected his disciples to earn their keep. Whoever offers you a roof and a job, stay there. Be content and do the Lord's work there. Just came to my mind that, you know, we always talk about bloom where you're planted. Don't be uh, hopping from place to place to place and never letting your roots sink into the soil and, 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 and making you a strong plant Amen. for the Lord. Amen. Find you a church home and get to work in that house. Yes. Bloom where you're planted. Mm. Don't be a potted plant. Mm -hmm. huh? That somebody can pick up and move. But let your roots grow deep Amen. So that the Lord can use you to work in his house. So why do many people think of work as something bad? 
There's going to be a whole bunch of folk that are going to lament on Tuesday morning. They have to go back to work. The whole continent is going to change. This weekend, everybody got a smile on their face. Football is starting up, college football on yesterday, and, 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 and all kinds of stuff. We got the U.S. Open tennis tournament going on. People just having a good time. There's going to be barbecues. Oh, man, a whole bunch of pigs going to give up the ghosts on this weekend. <laughs> and, and, and come Tuesday morning, everybody's lips going to turn sour. Come on now. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. <laughs> Back to work. Well, we think about work as being something bad because sin caused work to be unpleasant. Sin caused work to be unpleasant. In Genesis 3, 17 through 19, we see uh, where God spoke and he, he then said, uh, Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife. And, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand in front of the judge and have him pronounce a sentence on me like this. Whew. He said, guilty! And here is your sentence. Adam enjoyed tending the Garden of Eden until sin entered in. Sin came and changed work from pleasant to unpleasant. We think work now, we think of it as a necessary evil. If we don't work, uh, if we don't have to work, we choose not to, amen? Now y'all know, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some people do as little as possible. Amen, Walls. Amen. The idea seems to be to get more money for doing less work. More money, more money. This leads to the idea of someone else doing the work for you. Come on, man. Huh? Yeah. Some people choose to be employers rather than employees because they don't want to do the work. Amen. Uh, they'd rather pay you to do the work that they don't want to do. Uh, I remember uh, one time when we were living in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I was riding down the street, and I seen a guy with a sign saying, well, work for food. I pulled over. I said, hey, do you mean that? And he said, well, what you got in mind? I said, well, I got a shed that needs paint." And he got in. I took him home and I provided him the paint. And he got the paint next day. It wasn't a big shed, small shed, probably about a four by eight. And he painted, it took him a couple hours. I paid him $10 an hour. Took him back and dropped him back off there at Target where he was holding his sign. But 20, I didn't want to do the work. It was worth $20 to me. You know, because I, I hate painting, my wife will tell you. <laughs> painting ain't my thing. <laughs> hey, man, I got to know his limitations. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> In America, labor and management are adversaries. Huh? Ain't that something? Labor and management. Labor wants the most money for the least work. Management wants the most work for the least money. Then that's two diverse ideas trying to work together. It creates an adversarial relationship. How many of you had chores to do when you were a kid? Show of hands. Yeah, everybody raised their hand except the kids. <laughs> Today's kids don't do chores. That's right. Huh? You and you know why? Because <laughs> we don't make them. That's right. That's right. 
No? We want to give them everything that they get. Everything that they want. We try to provide it for them if we can. Sometimes we try to provide it for them even when we can't. And we get ourselves in trouble trying to be their friend. Come on, man. Huh? Amen. Have you uh, noticed that they want mom and dad to give them money? They want mom and dad to buy them the latest tennis shoe. Uh, yeah, all of that. They expect things to be given to them for doing nothing. Uh, back to our story for today. Signal in third class, Elgin Staples. Around six o'clock that same morning, he was rescued by a passing destroyer and returned to his ship, the Astoria, whose captain was attempting to save the cruiser by beaching her. Uh, that effort failed. And so now, uh, third class staples who had been saved out of the water by the passing destroyer, uh, still wearing that same life belt, found himself back in the water. More on that story later. Point number two, the American work system is not the Christian way. Amen. How many people remember point number one? Huh? Let me go back. Let me give it to you. That's right. God always honors and provides work. Always honors and provides work. Point number two, the American work system is not the Christian way. In Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 9, we find bond servants. Be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Yeah. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Amen. With good will doing service as to the Lord, and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is slave or free, and you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. He is not respecter of person. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are the master or the slave, the employer or the employee. If you have a job to do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. And if you have folk working for you, treat them the way you want to be treated. Amen. It's simple. This is not hard. This ain't rocket science, people. Why do we find it so hard to get this right in the American workforce? Slavery has been abolished. That was a good place for an amen. 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 Slavery has been abolished, but many workers think they are treated like slaves. Amen. Many employers have attitudes like the old plantation masters. They treat their employees like they have the ability to tie them up to a tree and whip them if they want to. God cares about how we conduct our business and how we treat others. We will all face the judgment. Amen? Both employers and employees. The Christian cannot separate his business from his spiritual life. He has no right to act like a heathen Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday and show up at church like a righteous man on Sunday morning. It don't work like that. Christians are Christians all the time. God is good all the time. And all the time, we are Christians. Amen. Money is an opportunity to help others. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4, 28 says, Let him who stole steal no longer, 
but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. If we all did like some of the Christians in Thessalonica and refused to work, refused to earn money, uh, we could not give to the church. The church could not pay its bills. The church could not help people. Ministries would go wanting and hampered or even eliminated. Back to our story. Close to 12 noon that day, Navy Seaman Staples was picked up again. And this time, by the USS President Jackson, he was one of 500 survivors of the battle who were evacuated to Numea, safely on board the ship. For the first time, Staples closely examined the life belt that had served him so well and kept him afloat. It had been manufactured by the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company of Akron, Ohio, and it bore a registration number. We'll get to the climax of that story right after my third point, which is the Christian does the best we can for others. As Christians, we ought to do the best we can for others, whether it be our neighbor or whether it be our employer or our employee. We ought to do the best we can for others. Amen? Colossians 3 says, Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not to men. Amen. Verse 24 says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. We work for God. We work for Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus. That's our employer. Yes, Lord. You see, some people have these bumper stickers that say, my boss was a Jewish carpenter talking about Jesus, because they work for Jesus. We work for Jesus. We may be employed by somebody else, but we work for Jesus. Amen. Uh, Christian employees should do more than what is expected because they work for the Lord. Amen? Amen? Christian employers should do the best, not the least they can for their employees because they also have a master. They also will face the judgment. Amen? Amen. Suppose a Christian has a $150 job to be done and two men are willing to do it. One man will do the job for $150. The other man will do the job for a hundred dollars. Which person should the Christian hire? It doesn't matter. The Christian is free to hire either one of them, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But he should still pay the one hundred and fifty dollars, regardless which man he hires for the job, because the job is worth a hundred and fifty dollars. A workman is worthy of his hire. Amen. If he does $150 worth of work, he should be paid $150. Amen. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew 7 and 12, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. Huh? If an employee can get by with shiny work, he has no right to do so. He works for the Lord. Who wants to do shoddy work for the Lord? Huh? When you pray to God, when you ask 
for blessings. When you ask for healing, you don't ask God to send you uh, a so-so surgeon. You want the one who was number one in his class. You want the one who got straight A's. You don't want the one whose philosophy was B's and C's get degrees. 